Hey everybody, it's Silver Seeker, and check this article out, guys. Actually, this is not an article. We are actually on the United States Department of Justice website at justice.gov. This is an immediate press release from the Department of Justice Office of Public Affairs. Guys, this basically says exactly what we've been thinking for years and decades. Um, you know, people say all the time, they're like, hey, precious metals are being manipulated. They're in artificially inflated, artificially suppressed. The prices should be higher than they are, should be lower than they are. I mean, people say all sorts of stuff. And this is just one example of proof of what you have been saying. Merrill Lynch Commodities Inc. enters into a corporate resolution and agrees to pay $25 million in connection with deceptive trading practices executed on U.S. commodities market. Essentially what that means, guys, and yes, commodities, so gold, silver, precious metals, essentially what that means is they were manipulating the market through a process known as spoofing. So if you don't know what market spoofing is, let me just kind of give you a quick rundown. And it's much more complicated than what I'm going to explain, but I'm going to try and put it in a very quick term so you can kind of understand what happens on the market when it's being spoofed. So let's say you have a bunch of silver and you would like to make some money on the silver market. Silver is currently trading for 15 an ounce. We're just going to set that as our number that we play with, okay? So silver is currently trading at 15 an ounce. You decide that you want to spoof the market. So you go ahead and you put a huge sell order for silver out at, let's say, 1550. That's way above what the current market is currently trading silver for. So that is going to, that's not going to fill anytime soon. You're trying to sell it for 1550 when you have a bunch of other traders selling for 15 and below. Well, now you have computer algorithms and other traders seeing a huge sell order at 1550 and they start to think, oh man, you know, so and so company is sitting getting ready 50 million ounces of silver. You know, the price is going to drop. We better go ahead and start selling our silver. So you have a bunch of traders and other computer algorithms, you know, by companies that decide to go ahead and sell their silver. Well, that causes the silver market to actually drop farther. So it goes down 1490, 1480, 1470. At that point, you go ahead and you pull your order. So you no longer have the sell order at 1550. Now with silver at 1470, you go ahead and buy a bunch of silver at 1470, right? So you've just gotten into your silver at 30 cents cheaper than you would have if you just bought it on regular market. So now the next step that you have all this silver that you just bought at 1470, we have to get the price back up before we are stuck in it and it continues to drop because obviously you caused the market to drop on the silver and you don't want to be stuck with overpriced silver. So what you're going to do next is you are going to immediately place buy orders for above market but not too far. So you're going to place buy orders for 1480, 1490, you know, $15 an ounce again where it originally was, but you need to cancel them immediately. And what that's going to do is going to cause computer algorithms to think that, all right, so-and-so company is now buying a bunch of silver at 15, we better hop back in. So all these companies, all these computer algorithms, they say, hey, hop back in the silver, we're buying more silver. So they start hopping back in the silver and it climbs back up to 1490, it climbs back up to $15 an ounce. Now you go ahead and sell that silver that you just bought at 1470 for $15 an ounce, you're out of it and done. You just made a whole bunch of money by just playing with other people and computer algorithms and pretty much just manipulating everybody else. The unfortunate side about this is you made a bunch of money, but a whole lot of other people lost because of your manipulation. And that's why spoofing is so bad. So that's exactly what Merrill Lynch was caught doing. Multiple traders were caught spoofing the market from Merrill Lynch uh, spoofing silver and gold trading, injecting materially false and misleading information into the precious metals future market. It says right here in the um, release, they did so by placing fraudulent orders for precious metal futures contracts that at the time the traders placed the orders, they intended to cancel before execution. In doing so, the traders intended to spoof or manipulate the market by creating a false impression of increased supply or demand and in turn to fraudulently induce other market participants to buy and to sell future contracts at quantities, prices, and times that they otherwise likely would have not done so. Over the relevant period, the traders placed thousands, and I am going to emphasize this, thousands of fraudulent orders. So they literally were manipulating the market, the silver and gold prices. This affected you, it affected me, it pretty much affected anyone that buys, you know, and holds on to and then sells, you know, their gold and silver. If you bought some silver when they were manipulating the market higher, well, that's that's unfortunately what happened now are you going to be able to get some of your money back on that no it's not going to happen you know it's not going to happen but 
I just wanted to share it with you guys because it is pretty crazy that this was, you know, even happening and happening as long as it was. In fact, it was happening from 2008 all the way through 2014, according to the release from the Department of Justice Office of Public Affairs. Um, as you can see here in the article that we are looking at, the, uh, the press release that we are looking at. So, and obviously it does say here at the bottom, if you believe you are a victim of this offense, please visit, visit justice.gov slash criminal, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, for little, you know, traders like us, it's not going to really matter. I just wanted to share with you what actually happened because it's really unfortunate. Um, let's see right here. It says the department reached this resolution based on a number of factors, including MLCI's ongoing cooperation with the United States and MLCI and BAC's remedial efforts, including conducting training concerning appropriate market conduct and implementing improved transaction monitoring and communication surveillance systems and processes. So in other words, Merrill Lynch was caught red handed. They knew they were dead in the water. And so they started cooperating. You know, I don't believe that Merrill Lynch, you know, didn't know that this was happening. I feel very confident they probably did and probably didn't care because those traders were making a lot of money for Merrill Lynch. Uh, they probably made way more than $25 million. And, uh, you know, I, I, it is what it is, but you know, they probably made way more than $25 million at the expense of other people. So it's, it's evil. It's absolutely ridiculous that this happened. And should there have been criminal prosecution? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the people, the traders that were involved in this probably should have actually served some actual criminal jail time for this because they hurt other people. But instead, you know, 25 million and that's, I guess that's it. You know, I guess money gets you out of everything, right? And Merrill Lynch has plenty of it. So there you go, guys. That's how it is. That's how it works. Thanks for joining me, guys. If you haven't done so yet, do me a favor. Make sure you subscribe. We will see you in the next video.